What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, we're gonna be turning this cheap Harbor Freight hammer into a very nice forging hammer that any of you guys can have in your shop. Because honestly, most forged forging hammers are extremely expensive and not everybody got that kind of money to throw down on a hammer. Especially when you're starting, you know, you don't really wanna spend all that money on, on a very, very nice hammer when you don't have the proper skills to use it correctly. You want to, to keep your expenditures at a minimum while you're learning how to make a real nice knife. And a $200 hammer really isn't the way to go, unless you got it like that. If you got it like that, buy yourself a $200 hammer. This video is for the guys that don't got it or just wanna watch me turn this cheap hammer into a very, very nice hammer. First off, what do we need to do? We need to round off the head of the hammer. Every time you hit the steel with this hammer, you're always gonna have a mark that comes in. It's a very straight line and you don't want that to be marring your steel, your knife or whatever because it's honestly a pain to get out of. So first thing you gotta do is uh, clean that up like especially like right here these these hammers are cheap so you know they're gonna be defective like especially right here where they ended up where they finished off the grind of left this sharp edge that's gonna be marring your steel and your finished product and you don't want that. So pretty much what you want is to dome it over just like this. This is a $220 hammer when I bought it about two years ago. No, about a year and a half ago from uh, Alex Steel Co. Awesome hammer. It, a real nice hammer really does change the game. Honestly, when I got this, my finished work improved heavily. It, it, it really does make a difference. But what makes the difference are these faces. This right here is the hammer I used to use. I had round, round it over one side and that's pretty much what I used. But when you get the real deal, man, it's 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 worth every penny. But you don't always have $200 to throw down. I know I didn't. It took me about a year of uh, being in this craft before I decided to bite the bullet and spend $200 on a hammer. Honestly, it was well worth the investment, but you're not always, you don't always have it. And honestly, right now, I don't even want to spend $200 on another one. And I'm I'm wanting a lighter hammer. So this is a two pound hammer that I'm going to be cleaning up to be using for, you know, smaller detail work. All right, so let's uh, start on this bad boy. For the majority of this job, I will be using a angle grinder. Why? Because when you're trying to do this on this budget, I'm assuming you don't have a 2x72 to uh, do the majority of the work on. So I'm going to do it all with a grinder or the majority of it with a grinder. So you know what you can use. Right now, I got a wire wheel attachment for it. And I'm going to wire wheel off all this paint because I don't like it so I'm gonna just gonna get rid of it all right so let's go on and clean this off right here it says do not remove for some reason so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and remove it all right so before we go further and start uh, cleaning up this edge I'm gonna show you the difference between this hammer and a forging hammer whenever you're forging this is a, just a piece of mild steel, so it's not gonna cause any damage to anything. And I'm just gonna... And now I'm gonna give it a couple wax with the rounding hammer. You can clearly see the difference between the two hammer marks here we have a lot of lines. I was hammering straight. Here we have a lot of lines, and that's what it's gonna be leaving on your uh, forging, on whatever you're forging your steel. It's gonna be leaving a lot of lines like this that are gonna be a pain to grind out and a pain to just work with. Versus here where we're distributing the uh, steel evenly and it hits it and it doesn't leave any any kind of straight lines or anything. It just leaves small divots that you can then either forge flat with the flattening side of the hammer or you can uh or they're just easier to grind out they're not just dug in straight lines so that's pretty much what we want to do we want to transition from this to this to achieve this result we want all we got to do is round this over bring this straight down and uh, round it over almost like a dome one side we're going to round over the other side we're going to uh, leave it more flat. So I'm just gonna take this flat that's already there and I'm just gonna break it down Get rid of these straight lines on my flattening side over here I am gonna dome it over some more uh, that way we get the full effect of both to be able to do this What I'm gonna be using are these red label abrasive 
uh, flat wheel discs. These are ceramic discs, so they take material off like crazy. Like nobody's business. These things are awesome. And they run about $7 a pop, which is comparable to box store prices for flap discs and their aluminum oxide or zirconia. And I don't know, it just it just does not work like this stuff. So this is a better bang for your buck. So I get mine from Red Label Abrasives. More companies sell them, but I get all my abrasives from Red Label Abrasives. This is not sponsored. They do not pay me. But if you go pick some up, tell them I sent you. Maybe they'll know I exist and maybe they'll say hi. Who knows? All right, so this guy is roughed in. All it's left to do is to hit it with uh, sandpaper and get it really, really good and polished up and knock over some of these little other parts that would be pretty easy on the belt sander, but we're gonna do it by hand. And it's time to flip it around and do the, the flatter side. All right, guys, so I still have some more cleaning up uh, with sandpaper, but you get the gist of it. Nice and flat, and then just drop it down at a with a real nice radius. That way it doesn't leave some uh, nasty marks on your on your piece. And do the same thing on the other side with just some sandpaper. And that's pretty much it. Nothing too difficult about it. I'm going to finish cleaning that up with some sandpaper, and I'll see you guys for the handle. All right, guys, so... We have here the original marks that this life made, which are like very sharp. I don't know if the camera's really picking it up. They're really, really, really sharp, really deep. Here we have the forged grounding hammer, the $200 to $20, $220 hammer. And I'm gonna make some more marks over here to see how, how well it's uh, working now. visibly less marks a lot nicer and i'm really whacking the hell out of it because this thing is a lot lighter so i have to use a lot more force than the other one but it's uh it's already being better and i call that pretty good compared to how it used to be so just doing this simple stuff to a uh, cheap hammer like this will really help increase the quality of your work the quality of your forging and make hand sanding a lot easier and grinding a lot easier Next up, I'm going to clean up on the handle. This is a hardwood handle, so, I, so, you know, I could take it off and put another handle on it and all this other stuff. But it's it's fairly comfortable, and we're trying to keep it as uh, budget-friendly as possible. So we're just going to go on ahead and keep this, and we're just going to sand it off real good, get rid of all this stuff, get back to bare wood, and we're going to give it a quick char and oil it up. All right, guys, so here we have the two hammers. This is my Alex Steel Co. hammer. 
two hundred and twenty dollars at time of uh, buying it. I'm not sure how much it is right now. Probably the same, or maybe a few bucks more, because inflation sucks. And this is the Harbor Freight hammer that I bought for eleven dollars at Harbor Freight. One's a three and a half pounder. One's a two pounder. Maybe slightly less now that I grounded all that material off. But both hammers will give you pretty good results. Will this guy perform as well as this guy? No, it will not. Unfortunately. This guy will this guy perform better than a hammer straight off the shelf for ten dollars? For sure. How much material and time do we put into it? Not very much time. And material wise, I mean a grinder. If you don't have one, you should get one regardless because how are you making knives without a grinder? I mean, pretty useful. And one flap disc from Relabel Braces, costs like seven change. One flap disc from uh Harbor Freight, the 120, that cost me a few bucks. Uh, a little bit of sandpaper for 120 grit, and that's pretty much it. Some Danish oil, or no, tongue oil, my bad. And some tongue oil on a flame. But this hammer make pretty much anything you need to make. And well, pretty much with this uh, hammer, which is probably 25 bucks that you spend on it in total, between materials and, and uh, the actual knife, the flap disc, and all that good stuff, Oh, uh, definitely make some very gorgeous knives that you can then sell, make a profit, and buy one of these guys for eventually. And trust me, this guy's worth every penny. But you don't always, oh, no, don't always have that money available. And as always, guys, if this helped you out or you learned something new from this video, consider subscribing and dropping a like. I greatly appreciate that. We're on our way to growing this channel up bigger. We're currently 15 and change, and we're going to get to 2,000 as soon as possible and keep growing. So. If you do me that favor subscribing, I greatly appreciate it, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.